and welcome to the Big 12 Mafia Show, part of the College Football Mafia Network. I'm your host, Nathan Bonner-Brown, and with me are my two partners in crime. That would be the Wild Ute and Moen After Dark. How we doing, guys? Doing well. Happy Tuesday. How doing we feeling, fine. Moen? Doing fine, partners. All right. Good. I like partners. That's good. I'm saddle the, up and right out. The Moen, must, you look the like must. Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt was like a doppelganger to you right now. Well, I'm close to three bills, so I'm more like William Howard Taft. But we'll ah. <laughs> so fat he um, killed his horse. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. We're on a Tuesday, so we're going to run through some news that we've covered and seen throughout the last four days since we were last saw you on Friday night. And um, this is going to be one where you're going to be able to participate quite a bit. We're going to have questions, answers. We'll do some polls. We're going to talk a little bit North Carolina, the ACC, Florida State, which is not going away. Uh, either is Miami, either is Clemson. Um, and then Notre Dame, which has been the talk of the town since you put together this uh, little short video that seemed to get people a little steamed. You tell people what you've kind of heard back af after oh your um, Notre Dame short. Uh, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish fan base is passionate about their independence. And I knew that a bit before, but I've learned it much since. And uh, I've been told to shut my mouth because I don't understand Notre Dame and not to wow. speak of Notre Dame. Yeah, not to speak well, of Notre throat. Dame. Yeah, say so basically shut your mouth. Wow. You don't have anything to say. You don't understand us. So don't even talk about us. Don't even put Notre Dame in my mouth. So, what? <laughs> I'm oh yeah, I'm serious. I'm real serious. Those sounds like a little bit of threats. We can, you know, we have a little bit of a base here. We could actually do some counter program if you want to, but we don't want to. That's not our job. We're just here to present facts, uh, reports, short videos on things that uh, all of us have put time in to find to report back to you. Right? We're not guessing. None of this is, is conjecture. We, we will show opinions. If you're new to the show, we definitely, it's an opinion show. But uh, one, we don't make stuff up. It's always sourced. And two, when we give something in a presentation form, it's not uh, ad hominem or however, you, however you, it's not off the top of our heads. It's actually prepared. Uh, there's facts. Uh, reports, other things that go into those things. So if you're new to the show, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for being here. I invite you to subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Follow us all on Twitter. Turn on your notifications on Twitter and on YouTube. And lastly, consider becoming a member of the College Football Mafia family. And this is how you would do that. Want to become a member of the College Football Mafia family? Simply select the Join button from our homepage. There are several options with their own unique benefits to choose from. You can also set yourself to auto accept gifted membership by selecting the gift settings options as shown. And that's a great video. Another one that was put together by Moen, who's an expert at these type of things. We really appreciate it. Uh, before we open up the books, uh, I want to get to some comments that we've got right out of the gate and, and get some recognition for some people that are here early. Uh, we don't always do that. We usually do it a little after the monologue and comments, whatnot. But we're going to do shout outs to start out the show tonight. So let's go with uh, right here. We got. College Football Mafia saying, oh, hey, Buckshot Kid. So, Buckshot Kid, was he the first guy in? Nope, I was. You, I you were sure the first guy out. in. <laughs> Joey Z was right then. Notre Dame is the villain. You, so you have support. Oh, yeah, I know. Notre Dame is the villain here. <laughs> Come on, bull, a little wild dude over here. <laughs> um, let's see. Buckshot Kid says, oh, hey, the College Football Mafia. Good to have you here, Buckshot Kid. Patrick, the ACC has only themselves to blame. We've been saying it for a year right. and a half. Uh, Timothy Green. Good to see you, Timothy. He says, always a very fun and informative show. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Daniel Gygax, always one of the first ones in. Thank you for being here, Daniel. Jan Hulk, all the way from Slovenia. We are a, a worldwide show, so we appreciate him uh, and, and always being up with us late. It's early in his morning, so we really appreciate him being here. And, and uh, just a follow-up comment from me from Jan Hulk. He says, Notre Dame topic, Moen needs a rant. So I've got a button ready if he wants to do a rant. I mean, we're ready to do that. Um Daniel Gygax says, as for, Notre, as for Notre Dame, they were in charge of the Big East Expansion Committee in 2012, then left for the ACC. Notre Dame only looks out for Notre Dame. 
Moen, mm -hmm. what do you have to say about that? Well, that's straight shooting right there. Notre Dame looks <laughs> out for Notre Dame and only Notre Dame. Can't trust them. Um, they come to your conference, they destroy your conference, and then they move on. They're kind of uh, ant like ants, right? Yeah. They'll go in, ants, they'll invade, yeah? destroy, so? and move on. Like they locusts. leave nothing back. Yeah, locusts. They, they, they kill everything. They don't care. It's them or, or against the world, really. Anyway, uh, Scott K. Stater in Florida says, hi, all. Hey, Scott, and to everybody else who's done it, uh, we are now uh, running a Discord server, and Scott is one of the first people that's joined. I really appreciate him doing that. We've got a few people that Buckshot Kid was another. I mean, uh, I could look at at the roster and see Koi. Uh, we, we just have a bunch of people that have been paying attention and want to join us on Discord, and we want you to do that too. So what we're going to do is uh, when uh, Rock and Rant joins us, probably in about an hour, we're going to do a Discord run-through. We'll show everybody how you do it. We'll put, we'll share a screen. You can see exactly what it looks like. And then we want to invite you to participate in our Discord community. It's just starting. Be patient. Uh, if things don't look great, we're, we're definitely working on them. Uh, but more importantly, it's another place where we can stay together and communicate all of our stuff um, over time. And that's really, really important. So uh, we we'll look forward to that in about an hour. Um, let's get a few more out here. Don in Kansas says, good evening, everyone. Good to see you, Don. Uh, both Don in Kansas and Minnesota Seminoles are members. Good to have you here, guys. Uh, hello, all from MNC, uh, yeah, Minnesota Seminoles. Uh, let's see here. Don in Kansas says, lol, Moen. Uh, we have Sergeant Pickles in from I don't know where anymore. He's traveling the world <laughs> right now with his family. Uh, afternoon, afternoon all and giddy up. That's what we got from Pickles. Um, let's see your devil frog, the original, the OG mafia member with me. Good to have you here, man. Um, Antoine codes. Howdy y'all. Um, uh, I think, oh, Shonsky bomber lunch Thursday. Yes. I will be in the office on Thursday. We can do lunch. Okay. One of these days, your lunch do... day with Shonsky. One of these I haven't days done it yet. Happen, I haven't done it yet. It's been my, my fault, not his. Uh, David Hackett says, hello. Scott Schrader's in here. Cowboy mowing. Are you a Moen's cowboy? Moen? Awesome tonight. I'm okay. the mowing shot kid. <laughs> mowing shot kid. Okay. Uh, Motivision. Did you see as an extra? On, did I see you as an extra on Walker Texas Ranger? Ranger. They based it off of me. <laughs> Gene Watson, new to the show. Thank you for being here, Gene. We appreciate Ooh. it. Notre Dame mediocre football at best. They have been. They've had nothing to crow about recently. Let's let's uh, get back to that here. Let's do more shout outs, but I want to get back to this comment. Sure, sure. go ahead. Yeah, go. Go. Yeah, like let's pull up, let's pull up some of the reasons why they are going to be no okay, here we go. Thank you, Bomber. So you bet. let's look at why Notre Dame will turn into a mediocre program here, okay? If they don't join the Big Ten. So really looking at the big thing right here is this. This slide, the dreaded future here, this is from the short video put out a few days ago. So Notre Dame's scheduled to make about $77 million per year, whereas every Big Ten school scheduled to make $93 million per year, and also every SEC school around $90 million a year. That just ain't Alabama and Ohio State and Michigan, y'all. That's not. That's like the lowest in Big Ten and SEC schools. So all of a sudden, Notre Dame and media rights money basically falls – into almost 40th on the list from first. Notre Dame wasn't the best program anyway, but with this financial gap with media rights revenue, how are they going to bridge that? Is it going to be through endowment funds as a bunch of Irish folks seem to think? Like, do you really want to operate at a net loss and have your investment accounts from your donors funding that? I wouldn't think so. But really, if you're looking at a reason why Notre Dame might become mediocre is because of this gap you're seeing right here it's just going to expand in the future unless they make a decision to jump into one of these two conferences. What do you guys think about that? Well, I, I think um, everything you say is absolutely a fact. And I think they should, from an outsider's perspective, join the Big Ten. But I know how they feel. Um, BYU's a little like this, where we feel that we're a little bit special. Um, and I... I understand what that feels like. Notre Dame's been special for 80 years, right? So why would they want to give up that specialness by joining a conference? So in my mind, I don't think it's about the money at all. 
at this point. I think well, my son's blanket there. special too, but I've got to take that away sooner or later. You can't always. Okay, look, blanket. it's not my it's school. A Dame, so... a little specialness and everything. Like you're not that special that you're going to fall behind and you're going to become mediocre. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you... I've got some heat on this side from uh, from taking some shots. So, so Notre you... Dame. Do you think if, if I mean seventy seven is still a lot of money? You know, uh, what would the gap need to be closed to to make it more realistic? I think, well, consider this, Notre Dame's, has, they've been making more than everybody else, essentially. Right, media right. Rights. So this right. is the first time they're actually falling behind in that front. And it's not just the one conference, it's the two conferences. So I right. think that is substantial because you're like, oh, you know, it's it's 93 million versus 77 million. It's not that big a deal. We'll magnify that over 10 years, right? Like that gap's over $10 million and that big gap becomes over $100 million, right? Like it, over time, it becomes worse and worse. And when you're talking about paying players, paying coaches at a like level compared to your Purdue's, your uh, Illinois, right? right? Like you're not even at that level with those guys anymore. You were just absolutely blowing the house off before if you're Notre Dame. Now you're not getting paid as much as Illinois. Like that's you- reality, guys. Well, let me, this is a comment from um, Hidden Hawaiian. I'm just scanning these while you're doing the presentation. Yeah. And he says, uh, Hidden Hawaiian, one of our members, says $77 million to stay special. They have plenty of donor money, $20 billion endowment. Just to answer a question, does the endowment have anything mm-hmm. to do with the football uh, 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 media rights or anything? No. An endowment is an investment account that your donors fund for your school. It has nothing to do with your athletic department. And so what you're saying there is, oh, we've got a lot of investment money that our donors put to use to build buy buildings and everything else. And we're actually, we can't compete financially in our football department. So we're going to use those donor money that we're supposed to go to different sources to fund our football program. You know what that's called in the business world? A net loss that's covered up with your cash right there. So your balance sheet is shrinking when you're using endowment money. So that's just not good business right there. That's not good business at all to use endowment money because Stanford could do the same thing. Ohio State, guys, guess what? Ohio State could do the same thing. They could use their endowment money to even pay themselves more if they want to do. But you're trying to balance a budget here for an athletic department or make money and be profitable. That's just not good business to operate at a loss and use your investment funds to pay for your football program. Very reasonable. Moen, what do you think? I think the heck with Notre Dame. <laughs> the heck with them. <laughs> Okay, so uh, editor's note here really quick. I reached out to our friends at Four Horsemen Podcast, obviously a Notre Dame Homer channel uh, who we really like. They've been on the show several times, and and we really like uh, everything that they're doing out there in the social media space. Um, I asked them to be on this week. They had some difficulties with that, so they're going to try to join us next week. No commitment there, but we'll get them on, and we'll dive into this further Really quick, you, before we get any farther, we have a holy cow. We have a Go Knowles. Gary Go Knowles has gifted one college football mafia membership. Gary. Thank, there we go. Moen, can we get him a sounder? Let him get cook. <laughs> let him cook now. Let him cook. I said, let him cook. I love it. I love it. I, I want to. I want to say thank you very much, Gary Go Knows. Thanks for paying that forward. That's what we do here. You receive a gift. Make sure you thank that person in the comments and then think about paying for another one for somebody else to go along. Uh, that's how we sort of build our group here. The more people that stay on, the more stuff we can provide, the shorts, the other things that we're doing. That really matters to us, and we want to keep doing that. So thank you very much, Gary Go Knows, and I appreciate it. Moen, why don't you tell everybody what he won? The Big Lubbock received a free membership from our friend, Kerry Go Knowles. Good to see you tonight, Kerry. I hope you're doing well, and we will let you cook. I love it. Uh, you, do you want let to add anything to that? Cook. Let that man cook. Thank let you, Let that Kerry. man you're cook. Okay. More than generous, and we really appreciate it. We do. Thank you very much, Kerry. And your Knowles are going to get out soon, don't you worry? Kerry. I know you know that. Kerry. We know That's that, too. It. I want to make sure I said that. Carry. It's a C, not a G. I apologize. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything more on this slide? You want to move to the next one? No. Nah, yeah, you know what? We can go to the doomsday map, too. Um, oh, okay. My, my personal favorite. Yeah, move to the next okay. one. That's just right. the last one, and then we'll finish this off. And <laughs> This one? Yeah. You, I, was, I was laughing the whole time putting this together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gee. 
Uh, really, but the doomsday mass says, yeah, you're falling behind the SEC schools, every one of them by 13 mil and every Big Ten school by 16 mil based on those figures. So doomsday for Notre Dame. I'm done. We're done with Notre Dame as far as the financial gap. We can talk about how they nuke the ACC now. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let me bring this off. And we will go to – here we go. Oh, yeah, you know, you pull that back. Pull that back real quick. Oh, is that the wrong one? I'm sorry. That, that's a little sneak peek on the Louisville videos coming oh, up. Oh, okay. Peek. Sorry, sorry. I won't edit that out. So everybody no, knows. Yeah, yeah, we had a map of the United States. We had a map of the United States and a bunch of icons. I hope everybody knows <laughs> how serious that was. All right. Um, was there something else then that you wanted to show? I'm sorry. No, so let's just have a conversation about the okay. ACC and Notre Dame. All right. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I think Notre Dame has put themselves in a position that uh, they're going to try to stay out as long as they can uh, for the reasons I explained a little bit earlier. And, and more, more, more than that, I think there's something ingrained in their culture that says because they're special, they deserve these extra things. And Moen has complained about it quite a bit. Uh, as long as we've been doing the show, he's he's talked about Notre Dame and their, their overreach and their thought uh, and, and everything else. But at the end of the day, they haven't changed up to now. And until the CFP takes away their specialness, do, do you have a slide or anything that shows what the payout? They get an extra payout um, to, if they get into the CFP. Nobody else gets that. Yeah, yeah. Pull that up. Pull the. Is it the same? Doomsday. Is it the same one? It's for it's the first slide on that, so you can oh, pull it out. Okay. Go for a slide. Um, this one, right there. Yeah. So okay. the CFP birth will get you six million bucks. Basically right. That performance based amount for the future. And, and Notre Dame got a nice, you know, pay increase. You know, from for the sure. Past to now, I mean, you could see they doubled their money, but it's just not nearly as much as everybody else. But they Notre Dame has a little sweetheart deal with the CFP. If they, they make do. the CFP, they get six million dollars. But that's performance based. If they don't make it, they don't get it. So remember that conversation we had with the Big Ten and the SEC, like fighting tooth and nail on getting guaranteed payments and not making it performance based. There's a reason for that because it's guaranteed versus highly likely or semi semi likely. So really, um, th that shows you that they would have to perform good enough to get into the CFP. And when you're running a financial gap compared to these schools, it's going to be more and more difficult. Before we move any further into that conversation, let's get another membership here. Glenn Fries became a YouTube Winner. member. Thank you so much, Glenn. Good to have you here. Uh, we'll do some Georgia Tech drinking. If you... Georgia Tech? Everybody, everybody dive in on a Georgia Tech drink if you're so inclined uh, that we have a little drinking game here. Georgia Tech oh. is the key word. Glenn Fries has popped in as a member. We really appreciate you doing that, Glenn. Thank you again, and I uh, hope you enjoy your access to our short videos. So I'm going to show everybody what that actually means, because there might be new people here that don't understand wh what their membership actually gets them. Let me bring this up really quick. So these are these are our short videos that we make, and the, the most of them are done by all of our members. So Wild Ute University is one of them. We've had some brought in by. Um, Coos Corner has done some. So has um, Moen has put some together. And these are fantastic videos that really show the length and breadth of what college football is all about. We've talked about Notre Dame. We've talked about uh, Coos Corner says Notre Dame will not join a conference. Moen Rance says, so long, Gentleman Jack. You want to tell everybody who that was, Moen? That would be Gentleman Jack Swarbrick, the, oh. <laughs> the conscience of college football. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, – Another video by uh, Coos Corner, could Miami Florida, sorry, could Miami land in the Big 12 and would they fit? Uh, and then we had the Washington State, Oregon State video, uh, the Miami, North Carolina, Clemson, Florida State, all to the Big 10 videos. And last but not least, this Wild Ute University, how private equity works. All of these videos are available to the members. And the ones that are really special, the ones that come early, are these special members only videos. Moen Rance right now, uh, this Coos Corner video. I thought there was one more, Moen. Am I only on two? I just oh. want to make sure I'm covering them both. Okay, that's no, there's it. There's three. There's three. You just can't. Well, the Oregon State, Washington State, Coos Corner, Big Muff, or Miami to the Big 12. And my mother. Oh, it's right there. Oh, Ooh, there it is right go. here. Yep. That one's still members only. Okay. I want to make sure we're clear. So, all these videos, you guys that are new members, jump out there, man. Jump out there and go watch these videos when our show's over. They are the best on, on YouTube. If you could 
find something better. Please tell me, and we'll have a conversation about how that actually works. Because I find it hard to believe anybody could do it better than than our team here. Anyway, uh, that's really fantastic, and I appreciate everybody contributing on those things. Um, like we, oh my gosh, we got another. What is this? So down here we got more memberships. Um, Glenn Freeze we had, and then we had. What's this moment? Oh, this is from the College Football Mafia. Some of our promo ship, promo memberships for April. We've gone ahead and given those out. First show in April. Uh, congratulations to Jan Holt, Illini Ted, King Spleen, Sky, Shonsky. You all are now members of the Big Twelve Mafia or the College ooh, Football ooh. Mafia family. Woo woo is right. Thank you so much for being here, guys. We got another that was big legitness. sounder. Yeah, it was. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on timing still, Moen, with all your sounders. I'm sorry. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the new memberships. We're, we're very grateful to you, and that's why we give out memberships ourselves. So just stay with us. We're doing more and more stuff. We appreciate what we're doing now, but definitely going into the future, college football is only going to get messier. Only going to get messier. All right. Let's get back to some of our comments. So we were just talking about Notre Dame, and I had a comment really quick. I don't want to forget this. So let me take this off. All right. So on this one right here, so it went from the conference payout went from six, uh, five and a half to 12 if they qualify, like you said. We're talking about Notre Dame now. Uh, but it also gives them, they still have their voting interest in the college football playoff as well, right? They still have a share, kind of like a conference does, unless something changed yeah. that I hadn't heard about. So, so Notre Dame gets that twelve million dollars from the ACC. They get the ACC share, and they also get that performance bonus of six if they make it, which nobody else is getting in the ACC. That's why everyone's pissed off in the ACC. That's why Clemson's so mad because Clemson's getting twelve million bucks in the ACC distribution that everybody else in the conference is getting. Notre Dame's getting it too, and then they're getting a little bit more on the side of that six million based on performance. There's the reason right there. I'd be pissed off out with the Tigers too. But yeah, Notre Dame is voting interest to answer the question. But like, yeah, how control- can ACC do that? They have controlling interest. You don't you know that? They basically voted Stanford, Cal, and SMU That's right. into the conference. That's right. That's right. They blew yeah, so up. Clemson the makes ACC. a playoff, wins multiple championships, and they're making twelve million no matter what. And Notre Dame could be making twelve plus six PT. Yep, right. Well, Clemson's still got to kiss that buckled shoe. So, <laughs> a well, leprechaun I, shoe. Mickey. His name is Mickey, guys. Oh, okay. Well, a damn leprechaun. Excuse me. At the end of the day, um, just to sort of wrap this up in a bow, and then we'll go into some comments. We, we're really active in comments tonight, guys. So we're going to go to them before we move on to another topic. Um, as far as Notre Dame is concerned. Ute is saying from a pure numbers perspective, it makes no sense, like zero sense for Notre Dame to stay out of a big conference. And we think that that big conference would be the Big Ten. Do do I have that right, guys? I would say that it makes little financial sense. But like, again, going back to the endowment comment, like if they choose to operate essentially at a net loss compared to their Big Ten foes and the SEC foes, then I guess they could do that, but that's just not very good business. Like that's possible. And so you can pull over 25 million or 50 million in endowment funds to have the biggest, meanest, most cash flush football program, but that's pulling from your reserves, your school reserves to fund your football program when you don't need to do it. That's that's the thing that doesn't make any sense. And eventually school administrators are going to be like, why are we using our investment funds to pay for Notre Dame's coaches? That's going to be an issue sooner or later. That's just finance. And so I think that it makes little sense, but they might try to do it. What do you think, Moen? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Notre Dame's going to be independent until you force Notre Dame to stop being independent. And I think the Big Ten needs to step in and tell USC they can no longer schedule Notre Dame. In fact, no They're- Big Ten team should schedule Notre Dame. Well, isn't that the fight back and the one thing that everybody in the world is confused about? Why are they treated like a conference? Why don't they lose the power that they've been grandfathered in? They haven't won a championship since 88. It's because they get into a conference and let that conference buoy them. They let the Big East do it. They've let the ACC do it. As long as there's someone who's willing to bend the knee to Notre Dame, 
they're going to get treated like that. So I think it's they crazy. basically they control the ACC. They, they yeah. never bring their football over. That's, no. that's the reason why you can't. That's unhealthy not to bring a football program over. Like that's why that's one of the reasons why I don't want basketball only ads for the Big Twelve. Right, it's just, I it's agree. Weird, unhealthy dynamic and stuff. And yeah, Ames a good case study on what that could look like. Um, but yeah, they'll never yeah. bring their football program over. So it's just like, what's what's the good of their basketball program? Their basketball program made eleven million bucks in the last fiscal year end. Like that's just nothing compared to these football dollars. Like the football program made one hundred twenty seven million. Like this, some context right there. It's just like not even close. So you're you're just inferior sports financially, not bringing over the big money maker. And I guess I will just sort of represent the other side of it. And that's not the numbers side. That's not the common sense side. That's the passion side. That's the history side and all that stuff that you really can't put a number on. Uh, that I think it, uh, it, two years ago, I might have said they would be forced to join the Big Ten. Last year, I'm sure you can find a clip where I said, yeah, they're probably going to have to join the Big Ten. Now that we've come full circle uh, over two years of talking about all this realignment stuff, I I don't I don't think they I don't think the money will make them move. I can't see a reason for them to change. The only reason that they, they would change is just if they were forced to. If the college football playoff committee took away their voting interest, they didn't. They still have some control in the way that works with a, a uh, with ESPN. And then as long as the ACC, they have a whole conference that is willing to bend over for them uh, to help them out with scheduling. Uh, unless this, one of those two but, dynamics change, I don't what, I don't. What see happens when the changing. ACC becomes toothless? Then what they could possibly they, go to the Big Ten. Uh, sorry, the right. Big 12. They those. lose Florida State. They lose Clemson. They right. lose UNC. They lose Miami. What's left right. on that schedule for Notre Dame? What's desirable uh, they, on that schedule? Wake Forest. I, yeah, I don't think exactly. it matters, though, Moen. I think they can play the sisterhood of the poor. It you know, does. Five on getting times. Into, it does, but you, if you're going to get into the playoff as an independent, you have to have a resume. Unless you're Notre if, Dame. Unless you're Notre Well, I think even if you are Notre Dame, I think they're probably going to look at an undefeated G5 and say that trumps a two-loss Notre Dame. Uh, I would love to say yes, but – the yeah. dollar signs say no. Think about this, Bomber. Uh, so if the ACC schools, when they jet, right, Florida State right. and Clemson and everything, right. and the leftovers of the ACC remain, your Wake Forest, your Boston College, if Notre Dame chooses, keep that up real quick. Put oh, sorry. sorry. thought you were uh, done with it. I'm sorry. Yeah, so there's actually something really relevant here to think about. Like, and so if your schedule dilutes itself and, like, you're not playing the big brands anymore, you right. see how in the future on this grid here, the media rights through NBC's, is estimated right. by many outlets to be 50 million per year. Right. What that's saying is 50 million per year for six home games, like six, maybe seven home games, right? Or seven, whatever. isn't it normally seven? Yeah. So say yeah. seven home games. Do you think that NBC is going to be willing to pay 50 million dollars? Like that's almost like like eight, nine million dollars per game, if it's going to be versus Wake Forest. And I, not do. Forest State? I do. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Okay. So they're going to, their I, media rights money is going to decline from I, what you I, see here. It's possible. It is possible. I just I I just think they have too much support from their people. They're willing to. They're like SMU without all the without the pretentiousness. If they well, want money, all they have to do is ask. Sure, but that's fine. Let them do it without playing you. But I don't want them playing any Big Ten teams. If they want to be uh, look, independent, I am not be independent. Don't put me in. Don't a position. play any Big Ten teams. Play your toothless ACC teams that you don't, created this conference. With nobodies, and then this, tell me how you're going to survive financially. I'm in a really weird position here because I'm not defending Notre Dame. I'm just playing the flip side of the coin here, right? I'm only coming at it from a different angle so people can see <laughs> we're talking about all the different facets to this argument. But I'm not defending them. I, I think it's been a, a travesty that they've had this this specialness for 40 years without winning right. a championship. The caving in from like every direction so the financial gap exists if the acc falls apart that's another cave in right here. And, it, and it's again, possible yeah don't you I'm think the SEC? sec would do i think the sec would do a scheduling thing with them i'm not sure like why does i, SEC I know the big 12 would notre dame yeah the big 12 would i know, yeah, yeah, I know. Right. but like, how how strong would the now let's talk about that for a second it i know it's crazy but say the ACC does fall apart and NBC doesn't want to be paying for Wake Forest and Syracuse and Boston College every year, right? 
as home games. So there's no, it's not out of the realm of reason. The Big Ten doesn't want to deal with them, as Moen has already said. He doesn't want to play one of those schools. I still think Michigan, Ohio State, and Michigan State will play them. But let's assume the, uh, the Big Ten shuns them. I guarantee you the Big 12 would pick them up. And now how much more valuable is the Big 12? A lot. Yeah. Not saying it's likely. It is how likely. The ACC that you've got that before. problem that the ACC has now where they won't bring their football over. And right. all of a sudden like, you've got this weird fit and everything. It's, oh, it's a horrible position to be in. Yeah. It's I not don't know good. if it's the best move for the Big 12 to try to add Notre Dame and non-football. Really, like, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That. And plus, like, the Big 12 schools don't have, like, a lot of history with Notre Dame. Notre Dame, they're valuable because they've got this historical rivalries with so many Big 10 teams and, like, your Miamis. Right. And you're losing that with playing the Big 12. I just don't see the – I don't see NBC supporting that at all. Okay. Going to the Big 12. Well, we'll, we'll find out more because we know that the ACC is blowing up. And I think that's a topic we can move on to really quick. We're a half hour in and, oh, my gosh, 140 people watching us live. I don't know why. Maybe Ute's looking good today. We appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for being a part of the College Football Mafia Network. This is college. This is a Big 12 Mafia Night on the channel. And we want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, a shout out to all the members that we currently have. If you're new to the channel and there are a lot of new people, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you follow us all on Twitter and then turn on those notifications so that you know when our shows are on. And then in about, hopefully in about 40 minutes, we're going to be telling everybody a little bit about our Discord server that we're getting getting ready to turn on. In fact, it's running right now. Uh, Rock and Rand is going to come and give everybody a walkthrough on kind of how that works. And that's going to be a lot of fun because then when we're not in shows, we could be talking on Discord uh, throughout the day. That'll be a lot of fun. If you'd like to be a moderator for that, we've had some people offer to do that. I've responded to everyone that I think I found. If you would like to be a moderator, please send me a DM at Big Twelve at B12 Mafia, please. If you send it to my BYU Bomber one, I don't check it very often. Um, and uh, yeah, just. We'll talk about what that looks like, but I would really appreciate it if people did it. All right, let's get to some more comments. Okay, so what do we want to do? Do we want to do comments about Notre Dame now, or do we want to move on oh, to no, some let's, of No, let's see the comments about Notre Dame. Okay, oh, all right. <laughs> I keep wanting to get to the ACC North Carolina, but if we want to We have to see here, comments okay, about Notre all right, Dame. All right, all right, let's do it. I, this is Ute Show tonight, everybody. Tom DeMay says, I'm Notre Dame fan, but ACC crybabies need to stop blaming Notre Dame. All the TV, top, let's see, all the top TV games for ACC involve Notre Dame, bring tens of millions of dollars to the conference, and ACC blame Notre Dame. I will just answer you really quick before Moen talks. Really quick, I don't blame Notre Dame. I think they are getting whatever they can get, and they're just raping the ACC. The ACC's dying. It's not because of Notre Dame. Oh, although the Notre Dame, if they join today, they could boost them up and keep the ACC going. All right, Moen, go ahead. Go, go, go. Yeah, this is <laughs> slightly uh, disingenuous because the Notre Dame games are played on NBC, broadcast nationwide. Why do you think they're getting better ratings? Because they're on broadcast TV nationwide. The other teams are getting buried on the ACC network or ESPN3 or ESPN2 or ESPNU. And they're only going to get buried further with this new SEC deal. The ESPN is only going to favor the SEC. So you're going to get your ACC teams buried, absolutely buried, except the times they play Notre Dame. So, of course, Notre Dame is going to have higher viewership on the ACC games. Wait until Florida State gets into the Big Ten. I guarantee you the Florida State and the Big Ten numbers are going to do better than anything Notre Dame does against the ACC numbers. All right. You, you well, what would well, the – Numbers look like if Notre Dame joined the Big Ten. Oh, they'd be much better. You, you think that they? You think that Notre Dame's numbers would be better than Ohio State's numbers if they joined the Big Ten? No, they're not going to beat Ohio State or Michigan, but they'd be better than they are now. Yeah, they, they'd be number three in the ratings. Yeah. Really quick, really quick, we got a super chat in the house. Lonnie Johansson for two dollars gives us a super chat. He's also a member. Oh, we yeah. appreciate it, Lonnie. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Do that again, Moen. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I love it. Thank you very much. He says, good evening from Northeast Kansas. And go BYU and UAU. There you go, Ute. How do we do this? Go this way. Right here. 
Get my hand here, buddy. Oh, oh, God. Nice. oh my gosh, I can't get that. There we go. Utah Utes don't know how to. They're not coordinated. I think is what that is. Uh, yeah, anyway. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're more coordinated than I am. All right, let's get to some more comments here. Thank you very much for the super chat, Lonnie. It's Thank great you, Lonnie. to see you. Um, I, I tagged a couple here just as we were moving. Here's one from Devil Frog, Notre Dame, BYU, TCU, Baylor. I've always thought that would be a fantastic conference or a group. I love the look games. of it. Like, right. I mean, we've got Notre Dame fans watching right now. Like, what do you think in the comment section? Like, do you support Notre Dame moving the sports over to the Big 12 if the ACC falls apart? I'm super curious about how they feel about that. Let's do a poll, Moen. Can we work yeah, that out? Seriously. What do you want? Do it again, you. Yeah, so Moan, simplify this in a pull form, but like, what if Notre Dame had the same deal in the Big 12 as they do with the ACC? So all sports but football in the Big 12. Would, they, would Notre Dame fans support it? <laughs> the look on his face. <laughs> it's like, that's the old Teddy Roosevelt look right there. Oh, my there. God. <laughs> That that look was death stare. There we go. All oh, right. Comment. So the so the poll is up. Everybody vote. What if Notre Dame? I can't see the whole thing now. It disappears for some reason on my screen. What if uh, Notre Dame also made the Big Twelve subservient? <laughs> I love it. That's a great. That's a great one, Mullen. Oh, no, really? He's, he can't even control himself. He's laughing so hard. No. I'm trying to hold this damn mustache on. All right. <laughs> the mustache looks. The dangerous. whiskey. The whiskey dissolved the glue on it. I yeah. bet it did. I bet it did. All right. There, there's a good poll for you. I let me read that again. So everybody knows. What if Notre Dame also made the Big 12 subservient? I got a vote. <laughs> oh my hell, that is too funny. Thank you, Moen. That's wonderful. Right now it's uh it's 57 says yes. I don't know. It's yeah, I don't know. It's going up and down. Everybody vote. Everybody vote. All right. While we're doing that, let's get to another qu comment here. Dennis Hattie says he's responding to a comment from Michael Morell. NBC is paying Notre Dame more than three times what they were paying them under the previous contract. NBC will be paying seven million per Notre Dame game, but twenty-five million per big game. And Notre Dame is a steal. What do you have to say about that, Moen? Uh, sure, they're a steal right now, but wait until they leave, leave the ACC turns into Wake Forest, Boston College. As your perennial powers, I mean, right. I I know that seven million for Notre Dame versus SMU isn't going to throw NBC all that much. That's that's a fact. What do you think, you? Yeah, well, it's a bigger risk just taking Notre Dame not having a full conference though, because with the Big Ten, someone's going to be good and people are going to watch because there's going to be a good team. But what happens if Notre Dame has a losing record? Nobody gives a crap about watching Notre Dame games. On NBC. Right. So you're taking that risk because you just are concentrated in one team. So, of course, you're going to make less money. All right. Excellent. Thank you for the comment. Appreciate it. Shonsky, another one of our members, I think a newly minted member. Good to have you here, Shonsky. I want to ask this question. If Notre Dame is irrelevant because of their uniqueness, why does the Big Ten bend over back or is it the lick <laughs> to put oh, them in their conference? They're irrelevant, irre right? I, I can't even read all that. Did you catch They're irrelevant that? without the Big Ten. No, they're not irrelevant. We'll say they're irrelevant. They're a relevant program. They're Notre Dame. Why do we want them in the Big Ten? Because it's their natural place in the order of things. They're a Big Ten team not playing in the Big Ten. Uh, they've been invited several times and said no. They asked to come in once and were told no, once or twice and were told no by a Michigan man, not an Ohio State man. Um, when was that, Bowen? A hundred years ago. It was a hundred years ago. A long I, I, time. It was like 98 years ago, or Jason Watkins will kill me. It was 98 years ago or something, not really. Oh, okay. Did a Michigan so, man turn Notre Dame down? Yeah, it was a Michigan man, Fielding Yost. A uh, real piece of S, that guy. <laughs> All right, but that you was a big team guy. Who, who, who the hell cares now? Anyway, um, here's another comment from Tom DeMay. That's the whole reason Notre Dame is in the ACC to get exposure for Southeast recruiting. Lots of Northeast Catholic transplants mm -hmm. down South, like in the Carolinas. That's according to De Tom DeMay. You guys want to respond to that at all? That's great. What happens when UNC leaves and Clemson and Florida State and Miami? All right. Very good. 
Um, Dennis Hattie says, we know how much networks made for national ads during college football games is public information. Why guess based on viewership when ad age and others have actual numbers? Ooh, that's a good comment. You tell everybody where you come up with your data. Why guess on viewership um, based on, oh, saying that like, it, are you trying to liken the viewership numbers with how much a school gets paid? It's because we've had people on like Bob, Bob Thompson have said the viewership is one of the key drivers. Brett Yormark said that, Big 12 Karen Brockton said that. I mean, that's one of the biggest drivers in the value is really how many people are watching the games because the TV, like your NBC is going to make money based on the commercials they put on, right? right. And more viewers equates to more money uh, for charging for commercials. It's really the, like, how you really boil down to the business and everything. So viewership has a huge, is a huge driver and correlated to your value as a, um, as a school. We need to come up with something that's permanently in here, maybe a tile that I can bring up at, 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 uh, at on, on demand you that actually shows what our formula is. That actually says, you know, Bob Thompson told us these are the things and how we break that down. That would be cool to flash up every once in a while when these conversations come up. Something to think about. I don't know if you can make something, but that would be kind of cool. Mon, what does the poll say for the Big 12? It says no. They don't want Notre Dame. That doesn't Seriously? Surprise me. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> so, so the no. Big 12 folks and Notre Dame folks are saying no? 53-46. 53-46. No. How many votes, by the way, Moen? Uh, that's a good question. I have to scroll up. 49 votes, so at least 50 people voted. All right. Well, the people have spoken. I guess that's what we're going to go with. If uh, BYU, sorry, if the Big 12 was there uh, and could avail, could possibly pick up Notre Dame, the Big 12 people don't want that to happen. Maybe Notre Dame people won't, don't want that to happen too. But I'm surprised not about a, fit, a little bomber. It's not a fit. I, you know, I think if, if it's not a fit, don't acquit. What is that? You know, that's something else. If the glove doesn't fit. All right, here we go. Kerry Go Knowles, a member for 499 Super Chat, says, serious question, seriously question, what has Notre Dame done post post leather helmet wearing days? Okay. Moen, I got, tell I everybody. Got this. <laughs> I couldn't care less about the team struggling. That's what they've done. They couldn't care less about the team struggling. All right. <laughs> Very they, good. You haven't done a lot, though. What's the last time they won a national championship in 1988? 88. 88. Yeah. Ronald Reagan was president. Oh, thank goodness, yes. All right. That's, that's pretty remarkable, actually. Notre Dame hasn't won a championship since 1988. They sniffed the playoffs a couple times, right? Got beat up they by played, Alabama. Bo they, played in the, they played in the natty twice, Again, I think, and got absolutely against, smashed twice. By Alabama. 35, roughly yeah. 35 years. It was ugly. Yeah, it's been a long time. Shocking. That's been shocking. A long time. Believe me, it hasn't bothered me. <laughs> hasn't Georgia Tech won a title since Notre Dame? Uh, you're right. 1990 shared title with Colorado. Yeah, the Yellow Jackets. There we go. Here's another comment. I don't know if you saw this, you, but Dennis Hattie coming back says no actual revenue for national ads is public information and published by Ad Age. The fact mm -hmm. that no one uses actual national ad space revenue indicates a big gap on what you base your analysis. Yeah. Ping me after. Let's talk about it more. I love it. Dennis Hattie, hit up Ute, the wild yeah. Ute on Twitter. And let's figure this yeah. out, man. Or find him on Discord. Yeah, or find, find him on, Discord, on our Discord. We'll have conversations about it and everything. Of course, we're going to take more relevant information into account. So if there's something that would be another leading indicator, absolutely, we'll consider it. So good comment. Yeah, it's very good. We, we're always learning. So don't think that because we have maybe something that we're not counting right now that we won't adjust and count it later because we definitely will. Um, again, I'm going to give a quick boost to the Discord server that we're going to be talking about here in about a half hour. If you've everybody sticks around, there's a lot of people on tonight. I'd love to see 100 people sign up on Discord and uh, join this community so that we can talk about this stuff offline. Uh, the reason, one of the reasons I'm doing this and we decided to do it as a team is because I'm just getting inundated with messages on Twitter and it's impossible to manage everything. So Discord allows those conversations to stick around and be resident and be live. I'm logged into it all the time. I know Moen and Ute are using it at different po parts 
Uh, I know Rock and Rant is one of he's our super moderator. He's going to be doing most of the moderator work on it now, at least. And uh, there's people to talk to. So about a half hour, we're going to go through those details. We'll show you how it works and get to it. All right, we're going to do another five minutes of Notre Dame, and then we're moving on. Let's see if I can get a question. Here's a comment from Rock Chalk 94 One of our members says, ACC is done. I'm happy. They spent two years telling me only FSU was going. ACC's been out of it for a while, honestly. Liar, you, liar, Chuck. pants on fire. <laughs> Especially those pit fans. Those pit fans are in for a sobering reality right now. I, I agree 100%. Yeah, well – I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. I liken Pitt fans to the the Utah fans, just blinding their themselves to the truth. And I understand why. I I definitely defend the reason why. But it's it's Utah is the bad man of the Big Twelve bomber. Okay, that's fine. The bad man care. of the Big Twelve. Oh, great! Run the Big Twelve. <laughs> that'll that'll be okay for me. I I know I'm not the only one that thinks it's gonna be tougher than Utah might think. Um, Hidden Hawaiian a member says, also another Notre Dame sponsor is JMI Sports, similar to Endeavor. That's another $20 million a year for Notre Dame Athletics. Moen, do you know anything about this uh, JMI Sports? Yeah, that's. but these are all for Notre Dame Athletics. you got to realize those things help pay for the non-revenue sports. Right. What Ute's basing his thing on is television revenue. This is what TV networks pay Notre Dame. We're not going into all the sponsorships and everything else. I mean, it would take forever to round all that stuff up, and but mostly because it's not pertinent. Most of that stuff goes to pay for non-revenue sports. Okay. All right. Very good. I appreciate the explanation. Um, let's see here. Another one from uh, Scott K. Stater in Florida says, I still don't know what these schools are doing with all this extra money. Most already get facilities, players, stadiums. You can only spend so much. Moen, what's the mm -hmm. answer? Oh, that's not true. You can spend a whole shitload more. Trust me. We did it in the off season. There's what always you guys do like give walk-ons, like money or something, and that's oh yeah, pay We're, players. Yeah, tell everybody about what Ohio State's doing with their money. We straight up exactly. pay players. I, I don't care. Look, after last season, what Michigan did, everything's legal. You yeah, know, right. As that's far right. as I'm concerned, it's all legal. And I don't think do there's anything too. that is illegal. Let me put it that yep. way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything. Sorry, I'm going through these these different banners. I apologize. All right. Uh, a couple more, and then we're going to move on to uh, ACC. Scrap and Wolf says, Wild Ute is awesome with his team analysis. There you much go, Wild Ute. Thank you. Scrap Somebody looking out for you. Thank you very much. Really enjoy, I like your look, too. It's super cool. Uh, Timothy Green says, please, everyone, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. It's great when people in the community are doing this stuff. I really, really appreciate it. Timothy Green, if you, you've you been doing this moderation stuff for uh, on, um, on YouTube for a while, if you want to do it on Discord, send me a message on, on, uh, on Twitter, and we'll talk about it. That'd be great. Um, let's see here. One more. Um, let's here's a one. good one on Notre Dame. Ooh. Here's one. Notre Dame has a lot of scar tissue for being rejected so many times in the past. Is that true? Your old Big Ten rejections. I I don't know. I've never been old enough to be in a relationship I can remember from a hundred years back. I mean, <laughs> at yeah, some well, point you get over so. it, you know. Welcome in the house. Keep jumping. We got Hall of Fame college football Jason Watkins and the coach. How you doing, Jason? Stop. Call me tonight, right? We got to talk. There's a couple things that we need to sort out. You can tell me what Jim said. Uh, Jason, thank you so much. Early adopter for the channel. One, He's been a mentor to me and the rest of the team. We really appreciate him being here tonight. Jason, if there's a question in particular you want me to get out, let me know. You can send me a DM on Twitter. I'll make sure to catch it. We're just flying through these comments. I don't want you to think I'm uh, ignoring you because I'm not. All right. We're going to move on to... Wait, wait, let's get uh, to that comment. That was a juicy, juicy comment from Jason. Oh, sorry. You're right. I didn't read it. Uh, his comment says, this idea that basketball is going to save the 12 is a bit far-fetched, and none of us disagree with you, Jason. Go ahead, you. Can't we, I mean, uh, invest in football. Focus on football. Football quality. Keep basketball strong, and that's what you need to do. But, yeah, basketball isn't going to save the Big 12. It's not. And basketball only adds, certainly won't. I will say this, the the one thing that will save 
uh, not save necessarily, but increase the longevity of the Big 12 is the destruction of the ACC. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what were you going to say, Moen? I'm sorry I cut you off. I was going to say survival of the fittest. You're right. You got to be, hey, look, the SEC and Big Ten are going to be the lions eating the gazelle. Got to have them right. buzzards. Come on, Moan. Really? I'm sorry. You set it up. You yeah, set it it's up. true. You a did. You, you kind of Can't did. we just okay, be a hyena? Hyena? You can be hyenas. How about hyenas? I'll take that. I took from okay. Buzzard. You're hyenas instead of buzzards. Okay. All right. You're just eating uh, second. That's the point. You're eating second. Yes. All right. Um, everybody, please, let's not get into arguments in, in the comment section either. There's no reason to come at each other. Everybody's opinion matters. Uh, Jason, thank you for much, very much being here. I really appreciate it. All right, so let's talk ACC. Uh, Florida State, I reached out to all the people that we know are really important and, and know more than we do about Florida State. And um, there's no news. They're still waiting for these rulings. April 9th is the date everybody needs to look forward to. So what day is that, Moen? That's five business days, and that was including today. So Wednesday, It'll be... Thursday, four business days. Oh, so isn't it next Tuesday? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. That's four business days before the ninth. Okay. The, the judge from Mecklenburg County said he would give you a ruling before that ninth day. So, okay. so why, why is that uh, day important? Just outline that moment for everybody. That's that's the day that goes it goes into court in Tallahassee, Florida, for the lawsuit that Florida State filed. The North Carolina one actually took place a day earlier because they filed it a day early. But they didn't actually vote on filing it, and that's what the whole motion to dismiss is based off of. So, depending on what comes out of Mecklenburg County, Leon County might be the only co court we have to really worry about. All right, very good. Um, and we're taking, by the way, we're taking comments covering the ACC, Florida State, UNC, Miami, and Clemson, if you guys would like to participate, uh, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, we do encourage member posting. Uh, I always defer to members. I also defer to Super Chat. Super Chat's rule all. We answer all those. Haven't missed one yet that happened during the show. And, uh, yeah, that's another way to get involved. Otherwise, you could join, become a paying member of the channel and hit the join button on the College Football Mafia, Big 12 Mafia main page. All right. We got another gifted membership. Moen, we, what do we got going here? Uh, Illini Ted has gifted a membership to Dennis Hattie. Dennis Hattie, make sure you thank Illini Ted in the chat, and I will give you the old Keith Jackson. Whoa, Nelly. Yes. Well there done. Finally. Whoa, Nelly! That Keith Jackson was a god when I was a kid. He, oh my I've, gosh! I've got a question for Illini Ted. Yeah, sure. How go does ahead. it feel to be making more money than Notre Dame in media rights revenue? It's got to <laughs> feel pretty good, as a right. Just, just let us know what you think about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're talking about. That's I, reality. I, I don't see. I, Jason says great sound effect. By the way, Moen. Um, yeah, I. I don't know. Line I said, hasn't said anything yet, but I think we all know how he feels. I would ask that I question. To, I'd be asking him that question at Vanderbilt. I'd be asking that question. Oh, I don't know. Purdue. Rutgers. <laughs> Purdue. Purdue. There's a bunch. But it wow. doesn't matter. That's the life we live in. It's not fair. World's not fair. Uh, please don't tell your kids the world's fair because it's life is not fair. All right. So no news on Florida State. Um, I talked to Rock and Rant. He'll be on a little bit. We can talk to him about Miami if he's heard anything from his contacts. Uh, but Greg Flugar, peek around the corner tonight, uh, did have a show this the, the late afternoon that covered UNC and noise coming out of UNC now possibly agitating to leave the ACC. Um, I know we've talked about this. We don't need to go into stories. We don't, All this stuff, we already know what the history is in the ACC now. Um, do we feel that, or do you, either of you guys feel that there's a chance that UNC, depending on what happens on April 9th or whatever that day is, uh, it, it, whatever happens on that ruling, if they get one, UNC could be right next to the, to the courthouse steps. Yeah. Yeah. Could very well be. I mean, once this judge comes out with his rule, I mean, this is what we're all waiting for and it's going to happen this week. I think, I don't think he's going to wait until monday to make a ruling 
Um, so pay attention. Keep your keep your head on the swivel, as Greg likes to say. Right. Tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday, something's going to pop. And if he drops it on a Friday, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> and, and remind everybody what the judge will be ruling on. Like, what's the matter at hand here? It's the motion to dismiss from Florida State. There's a bunch of different motions he's ruling on, but the main thing is. Florida State is asking for a motion to dismiss on their amended complaint because the vote, they never took a vote to file against Florida State to begin with, right? which is part of their actual bylaws. And now the ACC is arguing that it's not material to take a vote, which Florida State, which the judge kind of shit on them for that. But we'll see what he actually rules, so. So the ACC didn't really, if Florida State happens to get the result they want, the ACC didn't have the ability to even file a lawsuit. Right. Yeah. Like it's basically, they were, yeah, they were, exactly. It invalidates the whole thing. Invalidates they didn't the have the time. Thing. They didn't have the time to call the amount of presidents they needed to get them all on the phone and say, let's take a vote. We've got our quorum. Here's our vote. Let's file. They just filed. And you said, oh, no, we got to get first filed. If it get okay, so if Florida State gets the result they want, won't what does the ACC have the ability to come back and try to well, there's sue bases? What's you can appeal, you can appeal a judge's appeal. decision, but at that point, yeah. you're going to Leon County. You would have to think that the Leon and Doug Rohan could explain it better than I can. And, and then we're in Florida, right? For right, right. then right. you're in the like, Florida court. The terms system. are better for Florida State to win the lawsuit, right? right, right. That's yeah, why Doug, it's really relevant. Doug has scouts tonight, so um. That's the reason he's not here uh, tomorrow night. I'm hoping to have Jen and Jen Santi, uh, Florida State booster, and also Danielle Kelly on the show tomorrow night. Bombers hit list. Uh, that should be a really fun show. Hopefully they can show up and uh, we can talk more about these legal matters as we prepare for next week. All right. Coming in with a better background. You look good now, Rock and Rance. I, I'm like doing the honorary Becky background for a moment since she seems to use this one. And I'll get one eventually, guys. So chill the hell out. Uh, <laughs> really like a piano. All, all the, the haters. You know, I wasn't planning to be a professional YouTuber at any point. So I, <laughs> I know what I need to do. So whatever. Tell me on Discord. Um, we love, we love you, Rock and Rance. Tell, tell me on Discord. Been, uh, it's already bad enough that you make you guys make me come on here and have to defend schools I loathe, like Florida State and Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> You're triggering me as I'm commuting. Well, we appreciate you being here, of course. <laughs> um, all in good here. fun. You've you've uh, really helped us, especially we were looking forever for somebody at Miami, and once we came across you, uh, it, 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 we really you know enjoy having you on. So thank you very much for joining tonight. Before we dive into Discord, I was going to have you do a sort of 101 course on Dis Discord, if you could. But first of all, why don't you, have you heard anything more about the ACC, any of the lawsuits, or currently where Miami stands? No, I mean, I, I think it's been a relatively quiet couple of days. You know, I would say that within Miami circles of both writing fan fiction and rumor mills is that, ever, you know, the general consensus is that things are, you know, there's, there's more feeling that people think things are going to implode before the first kickoff happens than I think I've ever felt at any time. But whether that's based on wish casting or reality or probably a little bit of of both, um, you know, I think that there's a, one of those where somebody says something on YouTube and the channel close to Florida State and everybody then takes it and runs with it and makes their own version of it. So I guess we will ultimately see the destination. I think is still the, the same, right? I don't I don't see how anything's going to change, uh, but that is probably the general general take. Like I'm not expecting Dan Radakovich to make an announcement tomorrow. On the flip side, if right. anybody made an announcement tomorrow, I would also not be not be shocked, right? Like, I think that's just in that zone, barring any new information from North Carolina, Florida, courts, schools, Clemson, what have you, so. Uh, Ute or, or Moen, do you guys have any questions or comments? I think it's kind of fascinating that the Miami community is now chatting about this and stuff and like, and kind of thinking that there might be some momentum here as far as the destruction of the ACC before the season kicks off. Right. That was a bold prediction. Everything made by you know, TJ Bittinger when he right, put that it was, on yep. everything. 
Um, and it's, it's kind of strange that these fan bases in the ACC kind of seem to, to feel the effects of that a little bit. Um, and, and Miami's one of those too, because I would have thought that most would just jettison that off to be completely crazy thinking, but <laughs> I don't know. I think the people, it's I odd. think that comment about, you know, Dan Radakovich is like interested observers. I mean, people in Miami have been talking, you know, the fans, let me be clear, the communities that exist out there that um, talk about it, have been talking about it for a while. I mean, I, I think the first time I heard Big Ten conversations was over two, two years ago, three years ago, before, you know, I can't remember to sync it up to USC, UCLA timeline, but it's been out there for a moment. There's always been this inherent, hey, wonder what will happen one day since our former president came from Wisconsin, right, down in Chile. There's always been vibes like that in the background whenever the conversation broke. I think it's just people are paying attention, you know, that you can't help if you're watching any college football content to come across it, even if you're hoping just to find that reports about spring practice right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Moen, do you have any questions? No. Yeah, I think, not really. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything new. Did you catch the news or listen to Greg's show on the way home? Uh, he, he made some comments about UNC possibly starting, you know, some stuff in the background. Yeah, I, I caught a little bit of what Greg was saying. Um, took a minute to get there, and then a, a bunch, a little bit of what you guys were talking about. I, you know, it just sound. Yeah, I guess I'm not shocked that people in North Carolina are figuring out how they're going to talk to other parts of North Carolina should they want to want to do anything. But you know, my biggest takeaway is generally historically with Greg is when he says stuff on his show like that, where you're like, what is this really saying? Probably would have been a week or two there's the actual clarity explosion of a lot more information coming out. So it's kind of just the, the movie preview of a movie we're probably about to watch if I were to extrapolate it from past his prologue. Yeah, yeah it's bingo. I think that you're right there on nails um, with that. And UNC, like when when is this lawsuit going to come to fold? That really is the chatter over the USC, according to Greg Flugar, is that there's brief chatter going on right now. And like it's quiet at the moment, but it's just a little bit strange. And like that might be building pretty soon. And that could lead to maybe a lawsuit filing. So, yeah. And it might have been Justin or somebody, somebody mentioned, and I thought it was pretty smart of, you know, when it comes to North Carolina, maybe just the threat of the lawsuit has as much impact as an actual lawsuit justin, so justin did say that yeah yeah i thought that was pretty i thought that was pretty smart and maybe actually has a you know it, it's their baby you know they're fighting in house so to speak it's the thing that they created so right. how, do you, how, do you, how do you do that in a way that doesn't you know make the kids hate the parents when they're gone i'm not really sure if that's the right analogy but to some degree it's whereas everybody else is sort of interlopers into a tobacco road, could have kept the tobacco road forever, they probably would have, but they had to keep adapting to the realities of the, the college sports landscape over the last few decades. What's right. amusing is like UNC wouldn't be able to keep the ACC around even if it didn't file. It started to, if, if Clemson left, if Florida State left, if a Miami left, they're, they're done anyway. If UNC stays or goes, UNC is a great brand and everything, but that's not strong enough to keep the thing afloat. It's just going right. to spin the thing quicker, though, right? Like UNC files, it's just another domino falling and a big domino, too. And it's the inevitable demise of the ACC. And, like, it'd be really fa- – it's fascinating to see if, if we could see a court case over the next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, really, from UNC, too, because what would that mean for the ACC and the remaining teams? If they're not on the phone with Brett Yormark already, if they don't have a P2 invite, you better believe they should be. Every single one of those teams, I bet they are – They've already done all their vetting and everything, I'm sure. The Big 12 knows exactly where they're going to go with this thing. But, uh, yeah, this is becoming real quick. I mean, to me, logically, if I and I'm not a lawyer, just know too many and I've had to deal with contracts too often, <laughs> I would I would just as – I would wait if I were them. Like, why even do anything until you see the full landscape of hearings right now? I'm right. sure there's a, a logical, intelligent reason to – do a filing before any rulings come down on jurisdiction or any of the different things that are happening now or in the next week or two. But I think Clemson probably benefited from waiting. And I think North Carolina probably benefits from waiting, even if it's just four more days, right, to do 
to do anything. Uh, NC State Optics Society in the state of not you know, raining on their parade, which I also heard. But you know, not knowing everything and not being a lawyer, don't call me call me for injury attorney stuff. But I would wait personally until I heard what happened in the next two court filings, whether it's Florida, South Carolina, or North Carolina. Really quick, before we get to Discord, which is next, um, Daniel Womack, a really thoughtful question here. I want to make sure we answer it directly and straight up. Uh, he says, I don't get why folks in the ACC want the ACC to be destroyed. Hell, the Pac-10 just got destroyed a year ago. Shake my head. You, describe why you think it would be best for the Big 12 if yeah. the ACC was broken up. Like, Daniel, this sucks. It's a zero-sum game. As a Ute fan, I learned that last year with the Pac-10 falling, Pac-12 falling apart. And, like, the Utes had a landing spot in the Big 12, too. But really, I mean, this thing's happening whether we like it or not. The world is changing based on a variety of factors. And there's really nothing that we can do about it. And so the reason that we support that is because we support largely Big 12 and Big 10 teams on this channel. And the Big 12 right now is at a, is a major, major financial disadvantage to the power two. And if the ACC does fall apart, then that actually benefits the Big 12 and the teams that come over from the ACC in the zero-sum nature of the game. It actually lifts the Big 12. And that sucks if you're an ACC team. Some teams are going to get left behind and everything, but it's actually a benefit to the conference that we support over here. So I know that we sound mean and rude and stuff, but truly it's zero-sum. It just is what it is. And like – the ACC's desk going to be life for the Big 12. That's the truth. I, I, that's why I had you go first. I couldn't say it any better. If we're, we're both selfishly trying to cover the universities that we represent, right? So it's not a personal attack against anybody in the ACC itself. It's purely a survival mechanism. Um, it, it's yeah. survive. Or it, what is it, Moen? How do you say it? It's grow or die. What, what's your survival of the fittest? Survival of the fittest. There you go. Uh, do you want to add? I mean, I don't add it, go ahead. Yeah, go I mean, ahead. I'm, not looking, I'm not looking for the ACC to be destroyed. I'm more of the mindset of like, girl, don't go away mad. Just go away. Like, I just don't want anything to do with you. I don't care <laughs> what happens after, <laughs> you know, go create a new conference, figure out whether you want to compete in football, figure out whether there's places for teams in the big 12, you know, if, because I'm obviously hopeful that Miami winds up in the P2. So it's not even that destruction zone. I think if there's more vitriol generally to it, um, I don't, and I'm not trying to speak for Florida State, I'll speak for from a Miami point of view, is the Pac-12 seemed to implode to me from just incompetence. And the ACC is imploding from arrogance and not transparency. So there's a different type of frustration uh, with the conference from a lot of schools or be, at least fans of some of the schools in there. And but I also think there's probably a wider, there's more, you know, there's probably a wider gradient of, of, um, of that in the ACC than maybe even that the Pac-12 have, but I don't actually don't feel completely confident speaking for how, you know, wild you felt about Utah versus USC right. and UCLA. But that that's just my take. There's a little bit different, view of it incompetence versus arrogance is the best way i can kind of put it together though and having the p5 was a wonderful setup the pac-12 was so good for the university of utah utah fans love the pac-12 because it brought the, PAC, the utes up from the g5 and found success so it really stings it sucks because we fell apart as a conference too and like there's just no way to stop it it is what it is and like and so you if you can't prevent it, you might as well benefit from it. And that's where we're coming from, from this channel, Daniel. But like, if you're a Wake fan or a Boston College fan, it sucks. Like, I really, I'm sorry, man. Like, it does suck to get left behind and everything. Um, but if you're not, and if like you're an NC State fan or Virginia Tech fan, then the Big 12 will likely want to bring you over and we'll all make more money for it and be more competitive in the that's future. Right. So there's some positive cases here. It's not all negative. Absolutely. Uh, Moen, do you want to add anything to that? I got a super yes. chat. Go ahead. Where were the tears for the Big East when the ACC was gobbling it up? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, this is go. the natural. Yeah. This is the natural order yeah, of things. It is consolidation. Big bank, take little, yeah. big bank, take little bank. It's absolutely true. 
Yeah. Um, we do have a ten dollar super chat from Carrie Go Knowles, who's also a member. Boy, yeah, Carrie, we, we keep giving, uh, getting messages from you. We really appreciate it. Um, he says my neighbor who lived lives couple houses down from me in Neptune Beach, Florida, told me her brother, who's head head coach at UNC, her brother is Mac. Anyway. Uh, heard they will be making a move soon because they don't want to be left behind. Absolutely. And, that, and that's Kerry Go Knowles, Florida State, saying that. So there we go. Oh, well, he's, he's I mean, got yeah, a sounder yeah. deal. He's got a sounder <laughs> Let him cook. When people ask why you drink so much whiskey, it's actually because you have a genetic condition that your body doesn't produce its own alcohol. Therefore, you're forced to take a supplement. I love it. Thank you so much, Mo. We Thank you very much, Kerry. UNC's right. gone, guys. How you can yeah. UNC can't afford to stay. Like yeah, they cannot I, afford to stay. Yeah, I know. And so like it, it's either tomorrow or it's like a year from now, but UNC's <laughs> gone. Like they're not That's staying. Really like, the ACC it's not staying together. Like it just is a fact. All right. We're gonna now move on to the thing I've been bumping for the last hour, and that is Discord. So uh, this is the introduction of our Discord server. We're going to do this probably a few times on our next week or so, just so everybody understands what we're doing and how it works. Uh, Rock and Rant is our resident expert at Discord. I know how to use it. I was an administrator when I did video games and stuff, but Rock and Rant actually knows this inside and out. So he's offered to sort of do a demo. I'm going to share the screen. Rock and Rant will walk through. You tell me where to go, Rock, and I'll click on those things. But we just want to show people kind of what we're doing with Discord. Is that cool? That is cool. All right. Really quick. Oh, there's another super chat here. Kerry Go Knowles for Dollar ninety nine just had to say head coach for UNC lacrosse team. Okay. Okay. UNC Thank lacrosse. Team. I love Thank Kerry. You. I love Kerry because I know what he's posting is completely serious and legit. But it's also like the if we didn't know him as a user, it's the quintessential part of the entire realignment conversation where we have or grasping for information. Like my sister's cousin's brother <laughs> one right. time. You know, it's true. Man, one time you get was a driver for the AD's assistant intern, and and good. then it probably turns out to be actually right when it's all said and done because that's just how hey, that's believe it or not, going. There was stuff that happened in the Pac-12 thing that I heard personally, my ears, that were exactly like that. That turned out to be a hundred percent true. I mean, word for word, time for time, it was remarkable. Anyways, all right, here we go. Add to stage. I'm gonna make it big. Hopefully you can see it. So this is my whole screen. I can't make it any. Let me see. Can I make it bigger? I don't think. No, I can't make it any bigger. All right. Let me post the link really quick before you get started, Rock. Let me post the link so everybody knows. I'm posting the link to our Discord server, please, if you want to join it. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just uh, hit, click that button. You might have to create a, a new user if you're not used to Discord. But other than that, it'll take you directly to our server. Um, and really quick, let me see. I can't see the top of my screen. Can you guys see this College Football Mafia Network? Yep. At yes. the upper left-hand corner? Okay. We'll start from there, Rock. Yeah, so depending upon – if you've never used Discord before, but you've used something like Slack, you're going to have a rough idea of how to maneuver it, right? There's just basically type, different types of channels, some of which you can post in, some of which we have set up just to put, convey information. Most of them are text, but you can share videos and links and images unless uh, things go too wild. And then our moderators or someone will have to tweak things as a work in progress. And then there's channels that we can literally do live voice conversations and calls on. And depending upon what the illustrious three here decide they want to do over time, uh, have dedicated shows. Everything in here right now is open and we're just building it out. The more we get people in the better we'll be able to fix it and also just have the ongoing conversations that everybody wants to do. And I know the vast majority of you are addicted to all of this stuff because we follow each other like a tribe from different shows. So <laughs> we are um, so uh, bring more people into the tribe. If they can never watch the show live, there's a lot more views um, post the live show. Make sure those people, your friends are getting in there, invite people here and have the conversation. But essentially, when you if you haven't signed up for Discord server before, get your you know go through the steps there. When you come to the College Football Mafia link, you'll get asked to verify that you've read um, our rules and acceptance, and it'll be very quickly. It's a pretty standard uh, 
thing for a Discord server of the code of contact of what you can do, which is basically just be cool to people, right? Um, have the fierce rivalries, but uh, don't be vicious in a way that every other place would tell you not to do that. And you'll get access to the site. And basically, it's set up in a few different sections that are relevant and we'll you know, focus on a couple of key ones. When you come in, and if you or if you're just curious who else has joined the server, if you go to the welcome server, that's where we have a bot that basically announces you uh, with your Discord user um, as a user of the um, the the server. This is not a place to chat. You'll see some comments from administrators or anybody on this call right now who might welcome you, but it's basically just an announcement channel, and this is how um, people will know that who else has joined the chat prior to them potentially speaking in a room. Um, cool. The next thing down on the left-hand side is just um, what's a stick for the left side for now, Bomber. Um, the announcements channel, which comes right below there. So this whole section of four channels under info and announcements is just ways for us to convey information to you in sort of like a pinned fashion. Announcements will be things that the, the team wants to make sure you all know about. Maybe there's a special thing that's going to go on, a great event, uh, a need for a poll, feedback, but this will be where things like that wind up going. The third thing down is our code of conduct. You'll be prompted when you log into the server to, you know, to acknowledge and agree to a shorter version of this, but this is a more detailed thing and a reference for permanent side. And should something weird happen, you need to contact somebody about a challenge you're having. Uh, this will be a good, a good place to go and reference with the server rules. And then the next thing below that is the show schedule. If you pop it up, there's a graphic that'll just remind you of the permanent schedule as well as other things. But the server is also set up in a, with a couple other ways. Up on the top left above all this area, all of the shows that regularly happen, they have an event set up for them. So if you want to be reminded, because you're always on Discord or when a server is going on, you can, a show is about to hit, you can uh, sign up for an alert there. But also, generally in the main chat whenever the guys go live or post a new video like a wild university one that's gone to the public zone those will also be uh, shared into a channel so you won't have to miss anything in case you're not aware that something happened on the site so with that i'll just pause about the info and announcement section in case any of the guys on the call or there's any questions coming in and if not we'll just got to do a kind of quick review of what these other channels are and what they're used for yeah, let's do that. Let's scroll through the others. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be doing this a few times. You won't have to do all rock. So okay. let's just explain the basics about the, yeah. the really just telling the difference between the text channels and the voice channels. For sure. So CFB Mafia main chat is pretty self-explanatory. That is the place that if you're coming in for the first time or any day, that's where we kind of want everybody to hang out when we're just shooting, uh, shooting stories back and forth, talking about all the things that are going on in college football, especially around realignment, but just generally it's like the universal chat on topic. It's about college football mafia. It's not here to talk about random other stuff. We do have some spaces for that. Should you want to talk to fellow community members about other random topics? So we'll get to that. But this is kind of like home base, if you want to think of it that way. The main, the main channel where people like me and others will be constantly lurking. And you'll see right now as an example, uh, the Big 12 Mafia show going live and being scheduled that went into this channel. So in case you didn't know that that was going to happen later today, or if Moen posts a new rant uh, and it's randomly on a Sunday before a show, you'll find out here if you happen to be chatting about it, even though it's not a scheduled show. Uh, Wild University is, you know, the all these other topics are specific so that we can keep like a focused thread around the conversation. So it's not that you couldn't talk about something that while you just posted about is Georgia Tech a good fit for the Mac? Uh, <laughs> shout out to I know hey, drink, about, Georgia Tech, drink. Somebody Georgia posted Tech. about uh, G5 um, realignment, but it doesn't mean you can't have that conversation broadly in the main chat, but for things that might want to be a more focused thing and stay on topic and have a detailed uh, perspective. These other channels are really where that's for. So uh, while, you, while you University is an example, detailed NCAA lawsuits. So for example, when we see something to uh, Mecklenburg court and it's the document there, we'll put it here where there's less noise. So if you're just trying to really focus or get access to something, whether it's the, the latest filing or the conversation specifically about that for those who really want to get into the weeds, that's where that place is for. 
um, the college football playoffs one that's could be uh, could go in a couple of different directions ultimately because of when we launched the server and now that the uh, the, the ground has been laid generally for that uh, that that part of the conversation might go quiet for a while and then later on it could be where we're talking about all the playoff conversations um, right. I think the EA sports stuff will definitely kick in later on and there might be some more stuff that the team is working on that i'll let you guys speak to that at the appropriate time so basically these are just what's going on we do have an ncaa uh, tournament bracket challenge we thought we might launch this a few weeks later so there was a dedicated channel for that that will go away after a little bit of uh, time but probably come back in a new form and then the last text channel so all these text channels if you haven't used discord before you can write you can post images you can link to things uh, that are relevant for the topic channel off site. Right now, it's set to allow that. Uh, that's the goal is to give as many permissions as possible while also keeping the server cool and, and safe and not have it uh, filled with a bunch of crypto bros trying to get, you know, get money from you from bots. Uh, so we will see how that goes, but that's generally where we're at right now. But the feedback channel is one that we definitely would love for you guys to also participate in. So you have a dedicated thing like somebody asked about a g5 realignment conversation you wanted wild you to talk about that post that here if you are on a gaming server and you've seen a really cool way they've run something or a bot that has made everybody's life better posted here it's just a central place where we could have all those ideas that you guys and gals might have from both a content perspective or feedback about how the server is being run or ideas to improve it that's where that channel is so then the next section below that are voice channels. And if you were to guess, if you haven't been on a Discord server before, most likely the two places that will wind up having the most utility uh, and, and co consistency over time will be the, the main chat and then the CFB Mafia voice chat. And this is where you can go in at any time and just talk live like we're doing the four of us right now, but with everybody without having to have a a text on here you know i'm sure at some point down the road there'll be you know the after show party where the conversation goes for 15 more minutes or a special guest but you guys and gals can just go in here at any time and just talk to each other live on topic about anything related to the voice channel topic so cfb mafia voice chat we're encouraging that to stay very focused on the main football world the clink is a, a different channel that could be a little bit more broad in terms of what the topics might be and the third channel you'll see listed is AFK. That's just a place that if you happen to forget that you were in CFB Mafia voice chat and you kept, uh, you were just lingering there for a while, after a half an hour, it will time you out and just send you there so that we're not catching any spray bullets from your persona in the, the voice chat. So if you're familiar with Slack, where you have dedicated channels, if you've done anything like that at work, or e even things such as Telegram, uh, a lot of this will be sort of intuitive to you. If you have any challenges figuring out how to navigate in or around this, let us know, let me know. You, you can message me on here and I'm happy to answer it. And then another thing you'll, uh, we'll have some more information on, you'll see a, a sort of color coded thing of who the people are and what their roles are. So if you join the uh, college football mafia, you will start off as- a Let me civilian. show that again. Let me show yeah. that again, Rock, go ahead. So over on the right hand side and in the navigation you'll find in different places on a mobile phone or on a desktop but you can click a button to see who's online at any given time and depending upon where you are in the, the your journey into the server you're going to be associated with a specific role basically um a role gives you a different set of permissions like being able to text and, and post things and for the most part all of the roles in here allow you to do the very basic stuff that you can do on most discord servers um your name will be in a certain color if it's associated with that role and then on the the mafia theme that we have you start off as a civilian um we you have you know abilities to uh move into other roles as either uh bomber and team has uh, put you to, or we might start to encourage activity by letting you advance up the mafia ranks based off of how um, engaging engage you are with the server. And then you'll see other sort of titles that exist in there. So there's obviously gonna be moderators that can help make sure everything's running cool, administrator roles, but also you'll see a designation conciliary. And that basically would be for somebody like Daniela who comes in and gives a legal advice, like they're an expert in their field, they're our ace in the hole. 
Uh, you'll see some of the people from all of the different shows, whether it's the ones on this network or associated like Jen Noel, they'll also have a designation of creator. So if you're not sure of how you come to the server and the names are different than you saw on YouTube, those signifiers will sort of give you an idea of, you know, if any of those people are bringing something a little bit different because they're doing content for the network or they're you know hosting a show on renegade network or whatever that might be but we will eventually post a list of all the different roles so that you know what they are whether they're badges of honor or badges of function so that it's really clear of what those people are and what they're associated with that is fantastic it's yeah, almost like awesome you overview. do this for a business. <laughs> uh, the, the, check is, the check is in the mail, Rock. Okay, <laughs> So I want to make sure you know you will be reimbursed for all your time. But I would, good, first good. of all, before we get on to anything else, I just want to thank Rock for all the time he put in. He, he put in, he built a whole spreadsheet. He, he built some bots that built some of this stuff for us. I mean, it was immaculate. I, I cannot, I cannot be... I don't know what else I can say. Just thank you so much for putting that. Oh, you're more than welcome. It, uh, as, I, as I told Nathan, it lets me uh, torture people who have the misfortune of working with me that they can't say I don't know the back end, <laughs> even if I don't have to do it day to day. So it's always good to stay and uh, keep everything going, you know, keep your practice skills together. So Well, we really appreciate it. And I want to encourage everybody, just as we were watching, mm -hmm. I hope some people saw, I think four or five people joined and I was able to give them rights and they could float around the server. Uh, don't be scared if there's not a lot of content here. We're just starting. Um, but that's what we're inviting you to do. So I'm going to post the Discord link one more time. Uh, if you would like to join the Discord server, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Just get on there, and it'll keep you up to date. And we no longer have to try to do everything on Twitter, which I think is a pain in the ass. All right. Um, we we got a super chat in the middle of all that. Cleveland Rocks. From Cleveland Rocks for $10. He's also a member, which is fantastic. He says, teams that will never join the Big 12. Miami, Clemson, FSU, Duke, UNC. Virginia, Notre Dame, not cultural fits. Yeah. Teams that would, Louisville, Virginia Tech, North Carolina State, Syracuse, Pitt screaming uh, along the way. Uh, left out Wake and Boston College. And uh, yeah, Syracuse is right on the edge for me. In fact, uh, I can't wait for the Syracuse to the Big 12 because it might actually be a bigger number than the Pitt, Pitt one is. Is that right, you? I think Cleveland rocks. I think you're absolutely nails on this. <laughs> I think you're absolutely nails on everything here. I, I would I would agree with everything you've said. I feel well, bad. Don't I don't want to hate on Boston College, but I just I want payback for Blake James' decade of incompetence. <laughs> Boston College. <laughs> He's our, I, I our old like, AD uh... who helped to reign over the reign of seven and five. Okay. All right. That sounds that sounds bitter, actually. <laughs> uh, Tony Lawson, another super chat for two dollars. Thank you, Tony. Very, very active member of the community he says Bucky Badger is a skunk in a costume. And I don't think Bucky <laughs> Badger's here tonight. To, I don't think he's throwing, the, he's throwing nails when Bucky's not here. That's not cool. We got to pull up a picture of Bucky. <laughs> we, th th we should have pictures of both of them we can throw. They're amazing, yeah. amazing members. You guys are great. Tony yes, Lawson. Thanks, Steph, Tony. Uh, it's uh, Willie, right? It's um, yeah, Ryan. Ryan Willie is the yeah. one we're talking about. Fantastic members of the community. Can't, cannot be thankful enough for everything that they've uh, given to us. All right. We got a few more minutes here. Let's run through some of these late comments. And uh, I, boy, guys, this just, this time went through quick. Do you have a few minutes to stick with us, Rock? I do. Okay. And yes, it was, right. a, it was a bitter comment. For sure. Okay. <laughs> my, my, my most famous social post that wasn't on LinkedIn was a picture of my season ticket renewal package with Sharpie saying, don't contact me again till you fire Blake James being delivered to Hecht Athletic Center. So, yes. Very cool. Did you send that like registered mail or something? I did. And I had somebody I had it and then shoot them do it with the courier service to make sure I got the picture of it. Being oh, delivered. my goodness. That is fantastic. I love it. Um, let's get to some of these super chats. Timothy Green says Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech, yes. Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech. So if you're part of our Georgia Tech Thank drinking you. game, uh, you drink. Thank you time. so much, Timothy. I, I ordered myself a Georgia Tech shot glass. Okay. You did not. Did you really? <laughs> that doesn't surprise me mm. at all. 
not I at all. I and, it, and there is a Georgia oh, Tech yeah. emoji. You know, we've moved some of the emojis from the, here as well as uh, let them cook exists on the uh, in as a soundboard thing in our voice chat you know, on awesome. the on the um, Discord. Plus, you know, Mo, we need any other sounds you want loaded. We can get like six or seven more as like soundboard clips, but you can figure out which ones you want to keep exclusive to you. One one final note about Discord. You can ask any of us for help, but always we're going to have somebody that's online. You can send them a message and they try to get back to you as, as quick as they can. The bigger the community, the more people that will be on pretty soon. We will have people on 24 hours a day that can moderate and help. Uh, right now, just be patient if you're in there and you ha don't get an immediate response just because, you know, we, we have other things going on too. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, Tom, we're gonna get to Pickles' comment. Go back oh, real quick. Oh, okay. I forgot I had Pickles' comment up. All right, go ahead. Pickles. Fun fact: there are no Wolverines left in the state of Michigan. <laughs> what do you think about that, Mullen? I don't think that's true because I believe there's Wolverines in the Upper Peninsula. Pickles would know. Mullen would know. So. Yeah, I believe the Wolverines still stretch in the UP. So. There we go. Here's here's one. Hidden Hawaiian says, breaking news, the American AAC is looking to hire former Rutgers AD as their new commissioner. Do you know anything about him, either of you guys? Other than it was the AD for Rutgers, and that's sort of self-explanatory. Okay. Yeah, if he's All the right. guy who hired Chris Ash, he's probably not the best guy. Yeah, but. I don't know why they would do that. <laughs> Keep chopping, says what? And he's a Rutgers guy, right? That's an R yeah, for Rutgers. He is. What does overall brand really matter when realignment is all about eyes watching football? Big SEC looking to get kickbacks on UNC merch or something. Uh, Bob Thompson told us what brand really matters. Go ahead. You'd explain it. Yeah, brand it aligns a lot with viewership. There's a few things that align with viewership. Obviously, your ranking is going to come into play there, too. Your time, the channel that you're on, but really the biggest driver is your brand. And so your brand uh, is massive when it comes to, to that. So it has 100% to do with, with viewership numbers and the mercy cell too. So UNC is just a mad, mighty brand. I mean, it's Michael Jordan, guys. UNC is Michael Jordan still. After all these years, um, UNC has a massive brand. Like for, for basketball, the football program is not that great, but just everyone in the freaking U.S. knows the UNC logo. You can go anywhere in the U.S. And if you're wearing UNC merch, Folks know what you're wearing. Moen? That's a brand. Yeah, I just I just wanted to confirm. Yes, there have been Wolverines spotted in Michigan as late <laughs> as 2004. Uh, one was spotted That's... north of Detroit, actually, in a town called Ubley, about 90 uh, miles north of Detroit. And they took a picture of it. So so, so you're actually doing a little research. Sure. We're going through these. Okay. Sure. I hate Wolverines. I'm going to see if I can go up there and kill one. <laughs> Tom DeMay, UNC is like a, uh, an HR in every area except football success, but they aren't terrible and they are so strong in every other category. They are very valuable. Also, conferences need, need mid tier teams to beat up. Moen said that several times. UNC is just a cherry waiting to be picked, right? Yes. Okay. I don't yes. think anybody disagrees with that. Um, let's see here. Daniel Gygax. Years ago on the Blue Gold News Board, we had someone that worked on the sports information department that would leave info at times, big time insider info at the time. Well, does that help us now, Daniel? You know him now? Wow, that's kind of accusatory there, Bobber. <laughs> I'm just saying, I want somebody. Daniel, help us out. <laughs> that's MV3 HR right there. Yeah, that is Daniel. You're right. All right, I'll I'll I'll, I'll take you, my Daniel. energy and throw it to to M, M, M H Ver. Yeah, I, I you know at the end of the day, it, why is maybe Daniel? You can answer this. Why is West Virginia the school that seems to have the most leaks? I've never That's had anybody question. explain yeah. that to me. Yeah. Daniel, you're there. I'm calling you out right now. Did give me an answer. Do you know why? Oh no, he's saying nope. They left in 2017. <laughs> Daniel, can you – maybe you could even join the show. Can you explain to us stupid people why West Virginia is the one school that always seems to have the most leaks? Because they do. They were the most leaks for the Pac-12, most leaks for the Big 12, and definitely the most leaks now that we've seen for the ACC. I, I want somebody to explain that to me. Anyway, 
Um, let's see. Um, golly, there's so many comments here, guys. It's almost impossible. Um, here we go. Sky said, I, uh, I clicked accept invite and it said unable to accept invite. What did I do wrong with that invite? He, he eventually got in because I gave him rights. Don't they just go to invite people and hit the copy? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the, in terms of the link issue because there's a bunch of people that have come in during in the show, so I, it's generally working. Whether yeah, there it, was a user error or a posting error, I can't speak to. I'm sure it's probably my fault. If it doesn't work again, Sky, like I said, Sky ended up in. But if anybody else gets that and they're not able to get in, send me a DM and I'll spend some time with you on the outside, and we'll go through it and we'll get it fixed. I I will give you my time to do that. Um, all right, let's get to a few more here. Timothy Green, thank you for that comment, Moen, from a West Virginia fan about the Big East. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I'll accept that as an apology from West Virginia fans who kept me up all night one night when they beat Miami. Uh, and the bar in the hotel would not stop rocking all night long. Um, <laughs> and they gave me a free room out of it. Thanks. I didn't sleep for eight hours and had to drive back to Ohio. But <laughs> how's the how's the weather tonight, by the way? Uh it's not good. Not okay, good. Well well we we'll try not to keep you much longer. I know you have things you gotta do. There's a couple Our... tornado warnings, so Okay, well but let's not near me. Not near me yet. Okay. Well that kind of worries me anyway. RT says, Can someone help me understand why UNC is consistently mentioned with the likes of FSU and Clemson? Mm -hmm. Their basketball is great, but football is so so. You tell everybody again why you yeah, it's, it's all there. about the brand here, guys. It's all about like the recognizable ness of the UNC brand and the Tar Heel. Like it, it's Michael Jordan's the greats of the UNC in the past and everything. And if you, you see the UNC logo, no matter if you're in New Mexico or New York, you know what it is. Like in more people would recognize the UNC logo over the Clemson logo. Maybe even over the Florida State logo. It's really that recognizable. That really is telling of a brand. Like, do people know it? Do people, like, recognize it? Do they liken it to something? And so it's huge, guys. Like, and even recruit perception-wise, in the recruit perception survey back uh, last year, UNC was one of the top brands, according to recruit football recruits, not even basketball recruits. So UNC is yeah. a massive brand. It just is what it is. So I know it's weird because they're not great at football, but it's something. Yeah. I think people underrate that aspect. If you go back to the survey you yeah. talking about, like Miami hasn't won anything in decades, but if I'm not mistaken, that survey, Miami ranked number 10. And that's all about brand for students, for, for people who are getting recruited who weren't even alive when Miami won the national title. Right. Right. Like right. there, there's, it's the, do you want to hang out on the Target Apple side of the mall or the Walmart Microsoft <laughs> side of the mall? <laughs> <laughs> right like that's what it is and in north carolina has that ubiquity in the brand but they also just have that perfect blend of academic and athletics across the board that makes big 10 people probably want to hang out with them because it's just part of the cool club and scc has their different motive about getting access to a market and staying contiguous so they have slightly different reasons even though their core reason is the same so everybody close your eyes do a little uh, exercise here Everybody close your eyes and think of these. When I say the school, you think of what uh, you what pops in your head first when I put the name of a school out there. Close your eyes and I say, okay, North Carolina. Whatever comes to mind first. If I say Miami, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Everybody knows the U, right? If I say Utah, even Utah with the, with the double U's together, you know, that's a brand. BYU's Y is worldwide. So brands are huge. Ohio State not having a, a logo, <laughs> that's a logo in itself. So uh, it's, it's brands, I'm telling you, Bob Thompson, how many times do we have him on? Every time he says the same thing. Brands, brands, brands and rivalries is where we started. It's where you exactly. and I started a year ago. Brands and rivalries, rivalries. still relevant. Yeah. Uh, we got a super chat that whole, t whole time. Kerry Go Knows for $1.99 says, nice job, Rock. So there yeah. you go. Thank you, you got sir. Some support. You're very, very great. I appreciate it. Kerry's playing nice in the sandbox with FSU in Miami. We appreciate that. 
Thank you, Kerry. Oh, uh, yeah, we give each other grief, but it's all good natured. He just tries to figure out if he can rile me up, but like it's freaking sugar to my veins. I love heat. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> Wow. Okay. Inject, Lee, tell us inject, how. Tell us how you feel, right? I don't. I don't have a sounder for I love hate. It, inject um, Miami <laughs> hatred into my veins. Like that actually makes the school more attractive, right? Because you're there's polarizing brands are awesome for most things, especially when they're built around matchups and rivalries. So, well, Catholics and want, convicts. Catholics and convicts was worth a billion dollars. It, Catholics it and convicts was you could print money when that came out and it was print a joke money and get an espn documentary out of it it so. was a joke it was a joke when it came out and it ended up becoming a brand unto itself that's what brand power does for you so um sky just follow up on his note he said that it you know wouldn't let him join if you hit discord it gives you that error message because you have to create a profile he just replied and told us that it had to create a profile first cool all right, I, I think I'm done for tonight, guys. I'm going to ask all four, three of you to stick around after the show, if you wouldn't mind. I appreciate everybody for joining us tonight. We did some education on Discord, which I appreciate again, Rock, doing that for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've kind of caught you up on where we are in the news. So tomorrow night, we will be doing Bombers The Hit List show. Hopefully, I get Jen and Danielle to join me. That's what's on the cards right now. I'll have to see if that's going to work out. Their schedules are quite difficult sometimes. Um, and then Friday, what's our Friday night show, Moen? Big Freaking Fridays. And what, ha what happens Friday. on Big Freaking Fridays? I'm going to debut the Georgia Tech shot glass. There we go. Ooh. There we go. The Georgia Tech shot glass. I want to see it. That would be awesome. I appreciate that very much. Um, all right, last words. Uh, Rock, do you want to leave anything with the people tonight? Just uh, you know, come into the server. We could talk a lot more of trash and facts and uh, in a good-natured way and uh, keep uh, the party going after. So let's focus on trying to get everybody in. Trust us. It's gonna, the more you guys come in, the better off we will all be and have like, an interesting place to do a lot more wild things over time. If you have some time and you are currently logged in, and right now I see five capos and one soldier logged in, um, would you do some voice with them after the show, Rock? Sure. Would you mind doing that? Just jump into, let's just say, College Football Mafia voice chat. If you guys will just move into that room, Rock, and I'll probably pop in there for a few minutes. Um, all you have to do is click the voice chat icon and you'll pop in and you'll have to you know, adjust your, your, uh, speaking, like push to talk or whatever, but it's really easy to do. Join the, join us in that channel. We'll talk a little bit more about discord and whatever else comes to mind. Moen, what's your last thing is you want to say going out the door? Notre Dame are bad people. <laughs> wow. Okay. No, no. What? What? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I flew off the handle there. I apologize. It's <laughs> even oh, Christmas. God. Okay, well, that's the last words. How about you, you? Don't know how to follow that one up. Uh, that's an interesting <laughs> comment. Uh, I'm going to post on Discord right after the show here uh, just a slide for the new Wild University on Louisville, just to look at the market. Uh, just uh, some information that you can all can look at, so I'll post it on the Wild Ute. So uh, take a look at that if you're on Discord, and uh, we'll keep the conversation rolling on. All right, I appreciate it. And I thank you all for being here tonight. We were over, we were at 150 for most of the show. Thank you for uh, spending your time with us on a Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow night on Bomber's Hit List. And then if that this doesn't work for you, definitely hit us up Friday night or Big Freaking Friday Party. That is the one to be at every week. I'm going to post the Discord link one last time. And then I'm going to say we're out of here. Everybody stay safe. If you've been drinking, please do not drive. Have a great night. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Peace.